Welcome to my custom home build that I've been building from scratch. And this is the exterior work part five. Over the last few weeks, I've been getting a lot of details done on the exterior that needs to be done before the snow flies if we want to get occupancy. Danny and Jeremy got the soffit, fascia, and e-strof on and finished off the custom bending to make my dream bump out waterfall feature a reality. Two weeks ago, I got all the pine boards sanded, stained, and up and Last week, I got the feature wall done. I've always wanted a black home that blends into the foresty landscape. The last thing that needs to get done for siding is all of the vinyl. And you may have guessed it. I'm going with the darkest vinyl siding that I can find. Gunmetal Gray by Mitten. No sponsorship. I got their D4 profile instead of the ones that kind of come out and down. I also got Ford and Batten. And this is actually our Thanksgiving weekend. You guys have been begging for him to come back. I come bearing treats. <laughs> Yay! I'm the treat man. <laughs> the treat man. Autumn spice. Oh. And he brought me. Hi, Mom. Hi. <laughs> I'm worried about Craig's reaction. I know. He might say it's too dark, but I like it. But I want a black home, Craig. It's very pretty. <gasps> Thanks. <laughs> First thing we're doing is getting the scaffolding up so that we can strap the gable ends. That way the siding on the gable ends is the same depth as the siding on the walls. Shake test. <laughs> first things first, there are some holes to tape. Second things second, we have a bunch of strapping that Cam and I cut weeks ago when we thought we were gonna be able to get this done. The dancing. A little behind the scenes right here. Wow. Okay, so we gotta do two rows, five by size. Got my pencil, I want it back though. Many of you have been wondering where the heck is Craig and why hasn't he come and helped you? Like, my God, how selfish of him. I'm just kidding. Craig's busy season is spring to fall. He's in the wedding industry, and so he has not been able to come up and help. I'm so glad to have him back for the day. It's nice to be able to get into our groove, and Cam is running around and being our gopher, getting all the materials that we need. I'm ready. Oh, hey, Cam. It's a bit of a rainy day. It's like diarrhea. Oh my daughter's favorite word Her right now. Word, yeah. So we ran out of the strapping because we did like a double row at the bottom for the H channel, but Cam is cutting more with what we have, which is small strips. So we're waiting for that. We're gonna get the ladder up and tape the rest and do the rest. Now don't do this at home, putting a ladder on top of scaffold. I highly recommend that you- I did it all last week. <laughs> okay, then go ahead and do it. You probably had people like cheering for you, like fall, fall. <laughs> Fall. Is she gonna fall? She's gonna fall. I don't know. Those are the people who, when I post the video, they dislike it immediately first thing in the morning. Come on, you all love her. You know you do. <laughs> Some people don't, but they're blocked. In all honesty, like protect your energy. <laughs> Look at how pretty it is out right now. Holy moly. Even when it rains here, it's nice. It is. Like, look at it, it's stunning. So we're gonna be doing a piece of H trim all the way down, but I wanna start with the J trim. That's gonna go right here. So I think what you do is you snip and then you bend, you snip. Just this might take a little longer than planned folks. So I'm gonna entertain you while she's figuring it out. The sky's just opened up and now it's sunny as all hell. Ah! <laughs> This is gonna take me a long time. And while Craig is here, I wanna utilize him for more of the rough carpentry stuff. So we're gonna move the scaffolding to the other side and get the other gable strapped. And then we should probably spend time as a family since it is the Canadian Thanksgiving weekend. I thought we would have siding up today and I was mistaken. It's almost five o'clock. They got here around 12. We had like a half hour break and our meeting and greeting and everything. So like four to four and a half hours. We're all finished. I'll finish the strapping. Yeah. And then I have to tinker with all the, what is it called? Uh, Flash uh, trims. J-channel. J J-channel. J -channel. J trim. J trim. Lots of J. Some guy named J. So it's done though. And that would have taken me so long, especially with the chalk line. Like having two people is helpful. Now it's time for Thanksgiving dinner. Cam okay, started this peanut butter coconut curry this morning with chicken.
Good morning. It is now Tuesday morning. It's time to get some trim work done for the siding, which I'm completely new at. So let's learn together. First of all, I'm going to start with the corner trim and then work on the J trim going up the gables. Because I have my scaffolding out, I'd like to get my gables done and sided first. It's already 11. I have a short day because I was running errands this morning. So today is kind of like a practice day. 98 and a half. So I'm trying to remember everything that Danny and Jeremy taught me a few weeks ago when they started some of the trim work because they wanted to show me how to do some of it. And you leave a little bit of a gap at the bottom. So like, as you can kind of see, it's a little bit twisty as it goes up, like it twists around the corner. So what Jeremy told me to do is just kind of like find your best spot, nail it in and then put a level up to it and then level up as like you go use this as like a sideline looks good here looks good there what's nice about the foam you can stick the nail into the foam wherever you want it and then it's in there and you don't have to hold the nail ah these nails are really long Well, that didn't go well. That got really, really bent out of whack. Shoot. I did it! Second time's the charm. And then you just leave the nail a little proud so that there's movement. I'm just re-watching my video from two weeks ago where Jeremy was teaching me how to do the corner trim. Seems like he nailed in one side completely before he put any nails on the other side. This looks absolutely terrible. Like it's, it seems, no, it's just terrible. It's like, it looks twisted all the way up. It's just like, it's wide out here. Like look, it's so wide at the bottom. Why is it doing that? So like Jeremy's corner has a bit of variation at the bottom too. And I'm assuming it's just because of the aluminum there, but like his is, it's much better. It looks more 90 degrees all the way. Mine doesn't. Uh, I'm just trying to like take a parenting lesson for myself. If at first you don't exceed at something, try, try again. But first of all, I'm not trying for another 15 minutes. I'm gonna go sit. We've just had the absolute best colors this year. Oh, it's so bad. Yeah, I'm gonna try again. <laughs> This has taken me an hour and a half to get this one corner. One big thing I've realized, the three and a half inch nails that I have are way overkill and I do not need them. I only need two inch. And so that was what made it so difficult the first round was that they were way too long. And when I was hammering them in, it was like I was really fighting with the nail and it was causing the vinyl to kind of like warp in spots. So I think this is good. Frig, it, it looks good enough. I'm losing my mind. Now that that is over, I'm bending the J trim. I'm doing an L shape right here, L shape. I hope I get faster or else I'm not getting siding done before the snow flies. All right, I'm like, I'm gearing up to call Danny. This is ridiculous. So like I have, I have this piece, but like how do you get the next piece to go here? I just, I don't get it. It wouldn't record the audio, but I was so very thankful. Danny took my call and walked me through these custom little trim pieces. You can definitely bring that corner trim all the way up past the soffit, but Danny and Jeremy usually do this custom little bent piece. It looks a little bit nicer and sleeker, and I wanted to try it out. But doing this trim work without experience does get really overwhelming. I feel like as I gain experience, it's gonna get easier as I go. So kind of like this, this guy overlaps, this guy, I don't know, probably should do like a miter here, I guess. And then this guy's an L and then the H trim butts up into the J trim and the corner trim. And then this gets leveled out to that side. And then the siding fits in here. None of this is nailed in other than that. Okay, I got it in. 
kind of tricky, these small little pieces. I know there's gonna be someone saying you have to use nails. You have to leave it proud, but like you can't in these spots. All right, I'm gonna get this one in next. I'm just gonna use a full length one. This will be my cutoff guy. I'm a little bit like, ugh, like that J trim is twisted there. And like, it's a little bit frustrating, honestly. But I think I'm obsessing over things that you're not gonna notice once the actual siding is up. So I need to kind of move on. Before I can do the H trim across, I think I just need to do the other corner on the other side. I spent like an hour trying to get this corner right and it's so twisted. I just, I don't understand how they can be so out. It's like it's angled that way instead of that way. I don't know. It's been, it's been a very long time trying to get this up. It's still a little twisted, but it's the best I can do. The wall with the gable is honestly, it's just really tricky and I'm losing it. Like I, I have shouted a few times off camera. Yeah, anyways, I'm frustrated. The corner looks good, whatever, we're gonna move on. Took me an hour and a half again, but I'm gonna move on to this wall. Getting a wall that's a little bit easier done will bring me a little bit more of a sense of accomplishment and joy. And maybe it'll just be slightly easier. I don't know. I'm gonna trim out the bottom first. I'm having the J channel sit on top of this lip. I think it will look the best so that we can level out the side nicely. I'm gonna cut a little slit on this side so that it goes into the corner trim a little bit more easily. I have the trimming down around the outside edges. The next piece going in is the bottom piece. Just like anything to do with windows, you're always going from the bottom up when it comes to waterproofing. So same with the trim. I have little tabs notched out here. So the next tab can come inside this one. The next piece, this part loops into the bottom and then I'm probably gonna miter this spot here. So the top piece is cut out like this, little tab at the bottom that's gonna hook into this spot here. It's now a new week. I left you off on Friday frustrated and overwhelmed. I ended up ordering these boxes which I thought were gonna work, but they're not. And so I've had to order new receptacle boxes that are gonna work for me. And so I can't work anywhere where there's a receptacle box like this wall. So I'm gonna move on to one of the other walls where I can work. I'm gonna work on this wall. This wall was actually trimmed out by Danny and Jeremy like two, three weeks ago. All I have to do is properly cut the pieces and get them leveled and in place. Time to cut the next piece. And while I get some siding done, over the last few weeks, I've been testing out the new B300K battery bank. You might have seen it in the background while I was using a table saw, the air compressor, along with the AC300, and now you're gonna see me use it on the miter saw. It has no issues with high power draw tools like a miter saw and appliances because it has a 3000 watt surge paired with the AC300. And what is so cool, is I can pair this whole battery bank system into my backup home integration system when there's power outages. I'm so thankful I've been able to work with Blue Eddy for two years now. I get a lot of questions from you guys on them. I love being able to show how you use them with tools and everyday uses. This guy is so sleek. So I have, I think five B300 battery banks. This is the B300K. It is their new version. It is slimmer, sleeker, a little bit lighter, and I'm excited to work with it. I'm also very excited to add another battery bank to my backup off-grid system. I think that these are great for job sites. My husband actually used one on a job site recently. The general contractor had Blue Eddies there, which I thought was amazing. If he didn't ask you to put one of those in my truck for me. You can grab the, um, the one you're sitting on. Sit. Shot in. Alright, so the B300K has 2,764.8 watt hours. Amazing. It can be hooked up to the AC300 and any of these battery banks hook up to the AC200L as well. These battery banks have a modular design so you can actually hook up four battery banks 
to the AC300 unit up to 11,059 watt hours. The AC300 has no trouble running a table saw or a miter saw or an air compressor. But I've been using this system for over a week with all of my air nailing with my table saw. And in that week, I've gone from 67% down to 2%. The batteries do last a decent amount of time, but the B300K has an automotive grade life PO4 battery. So you can enjoy an extended lifespan and enhance safety with cutting edge battery technology. And with the B300K, you can get a three plus one year's warranty for long-term reliability. It also has 4,000 life cycles, which is great for daily needs or a reliable backup for power outages. And just a reminder, the AC300 has six 20 amp outlet ports, a 30 amp outlet, and multiple charging ports as well. Check out the Blue Eddy battery bank system, the AC300 and B300K linked in the description and in the pinned comment below. And thank you so much to Blue Eddy for partnering with me. It's looking pretty good. I'm happy with it. <laughs> I'm finally getting somewhere. The next piece that goes in is going to be going into the J trim in the bottom. The company who did my quote ended up sending me with some finished trim. And so what I'm gonna do is is shove some finish trim up there. The other option you can do is cut off, you know, a, the piece that you're gonna be cutting off anyways and shove it up so that there's a bit of like a filler piece in between the J trim so that this piece isn't like flapping in the wind. So yeah, the next piece I do have to notch out the window basically. That doesn't work very well on this kind of vinyl. It looks really easy <laughs> online, but I think it's easier with board and batten because that was absolute trash. Dog trash. I just need this vinyl piece to stay still while I do it. Exciting. It's harder than I thought it was going to be. May the darkest pencil line win. I tried. Kind of surprised. <laughs> Did I do it? I mean, okay. Okay, it's... It's actually great. So the only thing I didn't do that is recommended is some people use a crimper and crimp up underneath, which from what I'm seeing online, no one really uses it. And like the piece gets jammed in there pretty well. So I am so excited. It's already looking so good and it's time to get the whole wall done. It's only one piece of the massive puzzle for siding, but this looks so good. I'm so excited. So next thing I have to do is notch out the top piece. I'm gonna do the same thing. I feel like finishing trim is a good idea at the top there and notch it out. I forgot to put the trim piece in the top, but that's that's it right there. Great, I actually have to put the trim piece in now and I, I guess I have to redo that and then get the next piece in. Oh my goodness, it's mostly done. So where we're at right now is I need a two inch strip for the top, which is kind of really wasteful, slightly frustrating. Very last piece of the entire wall. I may go and get that crimper thing if I find that this isn't staying in well, but the other piece went in nicely. So when I was watching a video yesterday, the guy said, you're not gonna learn siding in five minutes. And if you think you are, you don't have a proper respect for the trades. And I was like, oh, you're right. <laughs> I need to be more patient with myself and have a higher respect for the trades. I'm not gonna learn it in a day or even a week. Sometimes it's gonna take a little bit of extra extra time to get it right. One more time. All right, I am gonna look. It looks so good. Oh my gosh. It's finally hidden. All of the crap is hidden on one little spot. I cannot wait to get this wall done. Board and batten, baby. And then horizontal finishing off over here. Good morning. Sometimes it's really tricky to like manage it all, but <laughs> I started a crock pot this morning. So I just wanted to show you because I'm so excited. Dun, da, da, da. Chicken thighs and potatoes. If you could smell that meal, you would be overwhelmed by joy. It smells so, so good. All right, so I got my one little section of siding done. That's great. But in order to move on to the next section, I need to figure out what is going on at this door. I want the sections on either side of the windows to be perfectly equal with board and batten, which means figuring out where the H trim is going beside the door and figuring out what kind of siding to use around the door. It might be nice having this 
gunmetal gray, this gunmetal gray, and then this section black. I'm just trying to see like color wise. What would I like best against the brown? This doesn't look too bad. That looks pretty sharp. <laughs> Honestly, I do think this going up is going to look cheap. So I think I will do vertical pine tongue and groove in here. This has been a lot of thinking this morning, but now that I know what I'm going to do there, I don't have all the materials. So what I'm going to do is just move on to trimming this wall because now I know where this H trim is going to be placed and I had to figure out this part of the wall first. J trim along the bottom, H trim up the sides. I have to finish off the J trim around the window and finish off the J trim going up to the peak. At the beginning of this trimming journey a week ago, I said, I hope I get faster and better at this. And I'm happy to report that I am. I'm finally figuring out the art of trimming. I'm pretty happy with that. Even though it's gonna be hidden by a gutter. <laughs> Since this wall is going to be board and batten, the last trim that needs to go in is a horizontal rake up piece, an H trim, because the board and batten only goes to 10 feet tall. I'm gonna bring my line right across, basically where the two roof lines meet, I think is the best point. Get it all leveled out and installed. This wall is officially trimmed out, but the hard part is I need to figure out how I wanna lay the board and batten out so that it's even on both sides. But like, do I want the seam of the board and batten direct center of this window? This is the thing with custom home builds and peaks is you gotta make it line up and look nice. So it looks like my starter piece has to be six and a half inches instead of seven. The boards are seven inches wide and the ribs on them are an inch and a half so I, you divide that by two and add it to the measurement from here to the middle of the peak here and then you add your 0.75 oh my gosh there's so much math that goes into this for this to work out i'm going to start with the lower half because i can get to the center of the window which is the same thing as the center of the top of the window so it should be the same now to rip off a half inch first piece that's a really level. I'm gonna leave that and get the next piece on, level that piece up. It'll be nailed in. It'll hopefully be good to go. Oh wait, how? I think I cut this piece wrong. <laughs> I needed to keep the nailing flange. How many of you were like, no? Ugh. We're gonna try this again. Like that, kind of weird. Starting with a batten shoved into a trim piece, but there's not much else I can do. <laughs> I'm so excited. That went in so easy. This is looking so good and it barely took me any time at all. Time for a finisher strip. There we go. This is the moment of truth to see if I got it right. I'm just gonna throw in the next piece because then I'll be able to see if I got it centered. Oh, I thought I did my math right. What happened? Oh, I'm so off. How? I just put a lot of holes in the wall for that to be wrong. I did my math the wrong way. I added three quarters of an inch to try to make this center. I guess I should have subtracted three quarters to get it centered. Like you, you can't have this off center by an inch and a half. You're clearly gonna be able to see it. And honestly, like I was trying to measure as I went along to see if I would land on center and I just thought I did it right. But Okay, well, getting these boards up only took me like an hour and a half. Here goes nothing. I've really screwed this up. 
It's still wild to me, though, how long it takes to trim it out or start your very first piece. And then the rest of this flew by. It does really suck, though. I'm going to have to tape all these holes. And I just, you have to get it right. It's a feature wall. It's going to look so bad if it's not right. I think for the gable ends with the board and batten, I'm just going to try to land the center of the board on the peak. And that way, if it doesn't line up, it's not as noticeable. Let's try this again. So this is a little bit different this time around. Last time I cut off this edge. This time it's exposed, which means the batten is going to have to tuck in here and tuck in behind the J trim. So I'll maybe cut an eighth off the batten. And luckily I can still use this piece. <laughs> I learned this during my steel roof installation. Sometimes you have to cut off that bulk, that excess, in order to be able to do the fine finished cut at the end. Because this is so much easier to bend and move out of the way of the snips than this is. Like that's not movable side to side. It just gets in the way. There we go. Much easier. There we go. Eventually, it's gonna fit like a glove. There. Oh my goodness. We're in. Hopefully the other side lines up like that because that'll look silly if it doesn't. Well, it should because it's supposed to be equal and even, so. I know I got it wrong the first time, but boy, does it ever feel good to have everything centered and lined up on the second time. Do you think we can do this in one shot? I did it. <laughs> Yay! Oh my gosh! I absolutely love that the batten got cut off and that the H trim starts and ends it. It looks really good. It's slightly smaller than a full panel, but like, man, I feel like I got lucky with the length of this wall. I'm so glad I redid it. I cannot wait to take a step back, but like, looking at it up close you can see like things line up really well yeah it looks really good time to get the top half done get that center of the batten lined up with the peak of the window it's gonna be fantastic i think this part's gonna be a little bit tricky just to get it started because you need to get the battens lined up between the, the two sections It's done. I'm so excited. I've been like, I've been looking, but like, let's all look together. <laughs> it looks so good. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. It looks great. I'm so happy I did this. Cam was like, I don't understand why we're doing two different siding types. And I was like, it needs to be a different siding type. It like makes this whole wall a feature in its own. And when he saw it yesterday, I was like, see what I mean? And he was like, yeah, I get it. Like, I'm glad you did that. So I'm so happy. And this just lined up perfectly. I'm so happy. I really wanted to get this whole wall done this week just to feel like I'm making a ton of progress and to get this small wall done today. But as you can see, it's raining and I'm so over the rush of this. I'm done. Welcome back inside. It's been a while since we've been in here and the last I left you off in here was finishing up the vapor barrier and the insulation in this room. There's still more to go, but I have some bad news, I guess, to me, and I took it really hard last week, is that we're not getting in here for winter. There's just no way. I have been doing fine with this build as a whole and really enjoying it. And then all of a sudden the pressure was put on to get into this house for winter, to make it livable, to not be living in the trailer anymore. And I felt like if I wasn't going to be able to get it done, that I was really going to disappoint my family, my daughter, 
specifically. Like, I want her to live in this house. I am so excited for her to have space again. And last week, it, it was just getting to me so much. Like, there's so much to do. I really had quite a bit of a mental breakdown and set some boundaries and I'm feeling a lot better, but I just realized how much the last like few months have stressed me out and I don't wanna keep doing it. It's not worth it on my health, my mental health, like your physical health even is so affected by your mental health and I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I'm, I'm so over it. I just wanna take this at a relaxed pace again. Get ready for winter. I'd be happy to get the attic insulation in, all the vapor barrier up and the heat on before December. That way it's nice and cozy to work in here. Get the wood boiler fired up. Pass all the inspections that I need to pass before I can start drywall. I don't want to end up resenting this home or losing my health over this home. And our trailer, it's functional. We have a furnace, we have running water, we have hot water. We've been trying to make this space feel more like home. And although we've been living in there for three years, like we've been pulling out our pull out couch every night and watching like a family show together that we all like and spending time together in literal closeness. And I wonder if three, four years down the line, if I'm gonna miss those moments with my little girl, all cozied up on the couch. Hopefully she'll still wanna do that as a teenager. I'm probably gonna miss those moments. So there's no point in rushing this build. There's no point in getting in if I'm gonna lose my mind over it, which I was. <laughs> And it's important to take your mental health so, so seriously because it affects every area of your life. So the bad news is we're not getting in for winter. The good news is, is I'm gonna take care of myself. So I love you all. Thank you for being here. Sincerely, I'm so grateful. And let's keep slowly plugging away. Just a reminder, check out Blue Eddie linked in the description below for the B300K battery bank system along with the AC300 for all of your backup off-grid needs. Time to get the rest of the exterior done. And with that, I will see you next week.